Mike Reese with 2013 Saluki Hall of Fame inductee Jamal Tatum. JT, welcome to the Hall of Fame. And a first ballot. What's it mean to you now that you're actually back here and in, uh, in the hall? Uh, to be honest, I, like, it's a, it's a good feeling. I just like being back in Carbondale. You know what? It, it's, it's a good feeling. It's a really good feeling to be going into the Hall of Fame, but it's an even better feeling to ha have a reason to come to Carbondale and be around and, and, and get out of some work <laughs> at the high school. What the hell happened to the hair? Uh, People watching this, they want to see the dreads. They are in a Ziploc bag at my brother's house in the garage. Seriously? Next to the punching bag. <laughs> they, <laughs> they are, are the they punching are. bag? or I kind of I let them I, I let them go uh, about a year after college. And I mean, it was a new phase of life. Let go of the hair and it's too much maintenance, too much money. Keep up with it, so I, I cut it off. And but you I still like can't throw look. it out, can you? I, I like the new look. I like the new look. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, do you have a favorite moment? Oh man, I got a few favorite moments, but I think the whole amalgam of the college experience was it for me. I mean, basketball, school, social life. I mean, I think everything was just the whole college experience was it for me. I mean, as far as basketball goes, I would say just just being on the team for four years with a bunch of winners. Mm -hmm. I mean, now that I've gotten out to the real world, is you see when there's certain kind of teams put together, whether it's you know, a business or, you know, a school. I'll, I'll be honest, there's not winners on every team. And um, if you want to win championships, if you want to do great things, if you want to have a great business, if you want to have a great school, there's got to be all winners on the team. There can't be any loose strings. And, and being on, um, you know, the SIU teams from 2003 to 2007 was all winners. Mm -hmm. there, there was no losers on the team. There was no losing attitudes on the team. And that was, that was the main thing I take out of it because there were so many games. Um, every game was memorable. I mean, every game that we won was. <laughs> every game we lost, you forget about it. But, um, yeah, I, I, the, whole, the whole thing, every game was memorable. And, um, like I said, just the whole experience was, was it for me. You knew what you were doing then in terms of winning. Are you more impressed with that now, six years later, than you were then? Yeah, yeah, especially being a coach now. Mm -hmm. And... And I've got, I got to credit, um, you know, Coach Painter and Coach Lowry a lot for what they did because, you know, now that I'm on the other side and I'm a coach, I see how hard it is to get together a team full of winners and, and go win every year or go win every game, you know, and just come out. And if you lose, people are surprised. You know, that, that feeling right there and, and that experience is, is something special. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm a coach, I, you kind of try to figure out players, and you try to figure out your team. And I'm still doing that, and it's the end of the season, I'm still doing that. So, I mean, I, I really think that the, the whole experience of just being a part of this was, was good. Yeah. Did, um, you're one of the more confident players that I've seen at Southern. And then there's the ability to back it up. Were you always that way at Southern, or were you ever shaky? First semester, freshman year, you wondered if you could do this or no? Mm, I think I know you feel like I just questioned your manhood here, but I don't <laughs> know. Nah, you know, Coach Painter, man, he instilled so much confidence in me. Yeah. And I, I think that he had the confidence in himself to have confidence in me. You know, uh, he, he didn't worry about if people were going to question him for playing a freshman as much as he did, or he, he never was apprehensive about putting me in the game because he knew what I could do. And, you know, to be honest, I didn't know what I could do until. You know, I came in, went up against Tony Young a few times, went up against Ryan Walker, and I was like, man, these guys were walk I mean, they were red shirts, you know, the previous year, and now I'm going against them and they're better than me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so I just started working extremely hard, and, you know, I knew I had to get stronger, and I just started working. I wanted to outwork them. I wanted to outwork everybody that was playing. And once Coach Painter saw the work that I was putting in and um, – believed in me it, from there my confidence was sky high and I, I didn't turn back from there but there was definitely times uh you know throughout my basketball career in high school and when I first got to college mm -hmm. where I was you know you know didn't know if mm -hmm. I could do something or didn't know if I should even be here and I, I even talked to coach painter here I'll go rambling again but I even talked to coach painter my, my first you know first month or two being on the team and I was like coach man I, I think I need a red shirt 
And he's like, are you crazy? I'm not red shirting you. But like, I, I begged you to come like to stay at the school when Coach Weber left. Right. And I'm not red shirting you. He's like, you got to find a way to play this year. You're playing. And when he told me that, it was, it was over from there. Like, my confidence was sky high and I haven't turned back. Yeah. He told you to shoot. He did. He told you he, to shoot the ball. He did. He did. Um, I'm going to take a sip of this water real That's quick. That's all right. Don't mind. That's all right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he told me uh, Hawaii. We played Hawaii. Uh, in the, the bracket buster my freshman year here. And uh, he took me out of the game. I was like, coach, what I do wrong? Like, I, I'm doing good. I, he's like, you're wide mm -hmm. open, you didn't shoot the ball. I'll put you in the game to shoot. That's all I want you to do. Don't think, don't do anything else, just shoot and make the shot. And he took me out and I was like, all right, you know what? <laughs> and maybe that's why I wasn't the greatest passer in the world. Wait, maybe that's why I wasn't the greatest point guard in the world, but you know, I could, I could knock down an open shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, Weber leaves, Painter has to re-recruit you? Yeah, well, yeah, when Coach Weber left, I... You signed when Weber was still the coach? Yeah, well, I, I committed. committed. I committed to, okay. uh, verbally committed. And then um, a few weeks later, you know, um, we started hearing rumors about Coach uh, Weber going to Illinois. And he came to, to my house. It was funny because he came to the house. He's like, oh, no, Jamal, I'm not going. I'm not sure. Those are just rumors. And, he, and I'm like, okay, good. So you're staying, right? And then, like, the next day it's on the news that he's going to Illinois. I'm like, come on, Coach Weber. So he, he got me. And then I, I just wasn't sure because Coach Lowry was one of the ones that was recruiting me. I didn't really talk to Coach Painter much. Mm -hmm. And then Coach Lowry was going with um, Coach Weber to Illinois. Right. So I didn't really know that much of Coach Painter. He wasn't really involved in the recruiting process. But um, he came down to my house and uh, he, came, he came and met me somewhere. We ate McDonald's and I was like, yeah, I'm still coming. <laughs> and so he took me to McDonald's and that's the way he got me. Yeah, we went to McDonald's. I paid for it, by the way. <laughs> he didn't pay for it, just so you know, no violations there. <laughs> I paid for my own McDonald's and uh, then I committed, but yeah. All right. Well, Painter tells you to shoot your freshman year. What does Lowry tell you to shoot, do Stop your shooting sophomore me. year? Stop <laughs> shooting. <laughs> but you know what? I, I, I appreciate what he did when he came in. I, I appreciate what Coach Painter did for me. And Coach Lowry came in and, you know, I, I was used to just, you know, getting it shooting. And Coach Lowry was like, no, I'm a, you got to be a point guard. You got you to gotta think a little bit more. You're not a shooting guard. You're going to have to think, get people involved in the game. So you're not going to just come out shooting. And I remember, uh, I forget what game it was. <laughs> it might have been, it was, I think it was like the game before we played Oklahoma State. And he was like, you know, you, you got to think more. You know, St. Mary's, not, yeah. Yeah, you're not going to just go out and just be shooting. Like, you got to yeah. think. And then like, the next game I came out and I sh kept on shooting, kept on shooting. I ended up ha having like a really good game <laughs> as a sophomore against Oklahoma State. And uh, it was, he was like, all right, you're good to go. <laughs> Way to listen to me. <laughs> he was hard on you. Mm hmm Hard on you. Yeah. Especially during practice. Yeah. Especially in front of the other players. Yeah. Then he'd call you back up at midnight. <laughs> you know what? He, he didn't Probably to make sure you find out where you were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to hey, bring you back up. Hey, I, hey, he would have called me if he called me at midnight. I wouldn't answer my phone. <laughs> All right. Well, then he called at, you at I, 11. I was probably at pinch. <laughs> <laughs> he called you at 11 then. <laughs> but uh, he was he was hard on me. And now that I look back on it, it's not a big deal because he made me a better player. You know, he, he, he made me take accountability. And and be not just an instinctive player and an athletic player, but someone who was cerebral and could think and, you know, process things, not like a, you know, not your <laughs> typical guard, the shooting guard who's just out there to shoot. He made me think and made me get people involved. He made me know what was going on offense and defense and made me be a leader. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to do. I mean, so, uh, yeah, there's, I'm, I'm, when I look back on it, I treat my, all my players like that. And I, and I appreciate the fact that he didn't treat me any different than he treated the rest of the players. He would chew me out the same way that he would chew the last man on the team out. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't like it then. I mean, <laughs> I didn't like it then. But when I, when I was a senior, we kind of got past that. And I, I got to the point where he wanted me to be as a player, and everything was good. 2007 had to be the funnest year. Had to be. Uh, Sweet 16. I think. Forget the Kansas game for the moment. Yeah. I think every game. Might not get to year, that level ever again here. I will say. 11th every, in the country? Every, every year. I, yeah, I, I went back and looked at this stuff, and 11 in the nation is pretty good. Four seed? The, yeah. <clears throat> but I think every year, I will say, I, I'm not going to sit up here and lie, but my junior year was a little shaky. Yes. It wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't a fun season. We had some things that we need to, you know, address uh, with some people on the team. and You and Tony they, had to get together. We did. We had, and you we, did in we had to come to Jesus meeting and yeah. everything worked out. But that, I will say every year that I was here, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed my teammates. But junior year 
was a little step down, especially from how hard I worked in the offseason. And for, personally, it, it wasn't a, I didn't think it was a great year for me. I mean, we still did well as a team. We came together at the end, ended up going to the tournament. But all the years were fun, man. I, I, freshman year was great being around all those older guys. Um, they taught me a lot. Darren Brooks, I learned so much from him. Like, my game was molded after Darren's game. I mean, I couldn't do some of the things he could do, but the things that I could do, I, I took from him, and I, I stole a lot of his game. And that was one of the best players I've ever played against, man. He could dunk a little better than you. But for how tall he was, he couldn't dunk much better than me. We gotta, we gotta be on a relative scale here now. <laughs> I mean, for it, how long his arms were and how uh, tall he was. Now I'm interested in numbers. I don't know. I don't I'm interested know. in numbers. I don't know. <laughs> but you did dunk senior night. I did. I did. I, I got, I got a few dunks. I got a few dunks in my career. That was no baby dunk either. Yeah. I'm quoting you. Yeah, yeah. I got that email you sent me. It's funny. I like that. I let all my, I let all my players here too on the team. I was like, I used to be something, guys. Even though you don't listen to me now, I used to be something. I you know, for something. many of us, the favorite shot is a step back shot at Butler. And that was luck. That was complete <laughs> luck. And Coach Dowry was going to take me out of the game, but I missed that. I'm sure of that. And I, I, after I shot it, I kind of like faded back just to start going towards the bench because I thought he was going to sub me out. So I started come fading back to the bench a little bit just to get ready to come out of the game. But, you know, when, when things are going good, they're going good. And went yeah. in, and it was luck. But The Kansas loss. You're going to frown now, aren't you? No, nah, not at all. No? Not at all. Not at all. I thought that was still a sore, sore point. I don't watch the game much. I mean, I show my... <laughs> <laughs> much. <laughs> yeah, I don't watch the game much, but I showed my team, my, my high school team, the game, and, you know, sh showed about, told them about how hard work can put you in a position to win mm -hmm. any game, no matter if a team's got more talent than you or not. And, uh, but that was a good game. I mean, that was a good college basketball game. They had a little bit more firepower than us, and they ended up winning the game. But that was a great – I would have paid to watch it. A <laughs> missed layup from going to the final eight. Who missed the layup? <laughs> Is he wearing a bow tie now? <laughs> Maybe. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, hey, that, you that know, you guys, that, you that, guys that didn't – You guys didn't – You guys – You guys – I knew there had to be a reason. The, the ball was too sticky. That's why I missed all my shots the first half. I was getting used to the ball. It was too sticky. Yeah. Well, there were other shots, too, yeah. to win that game. That's yeah, why that game hurts. And you guys yeah. didn't say it at the time, but you said it later. You guys thought you were a Final Four team. Yeah. I, I told uh, Christian Cornelius that in the summer. And uh, I was like, man, we're going, we're going to the Final Four. And then he got hurt. I, I forget if he tore his ACL or what happened. He hurt his knee and he was mm -hmm. out the whole season. But I told him, I was like, man, this is before we even played Kansas, before we went to the tournament. And I was like, man, with you, I promise you, we go to the Final Four. I know we'll go to the Final Four with you on the team. And then he gets hurt. And, I mean, he's already hurt. And then it, it, was, it was a bad day. I wish he could have been a, a part of that season to actually get on the court and play. Mm -hmm. Because he, he was, like, the X factor. In the summer, he, he was the first pick always to pick up games. We always picked Christian first. And that, he was the X factor. And I, I tell him that to this day. And I know he's hurt. You can play in it. But we were, I think we were Final Four team. Yeah. Are you one of these guys, and there's not many of them, who, when they look back at their career, say, I wouldn't do anything different. There's nothing different. I got everything out of my college career I should have gotten out of my college career. Uh, I think, I think I probably, the only thing, the only thing is I probably would have, I probably would have taken care of my body better. You know, I, there would have been, there, now that I look back on it, there would definitely been games I would have sat out of. I mean, I wanted to play so bad, and I, and I was young, mm -hmm. and I, my, my will to compete was just, you know, it was more than my will to be smart. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's definitely, I mean, with my ankle troubles that I have now, I mean, I mean, I get up every morning and my ankles hurt, you know what I mean? And I, I would have done stuff personally, you know, outside, off, outside of the basketball mm -hmm. court differently. But um, as far as the overall, there's not much I would change. Mm -hmm. but. You know, in general, I would definitely would have taken care of my body better and, you know, ice more, took more ice baths, stretch more. That's what all the old people say, and I'm old now, I guess. So that's, I mean, now that I look back on it, I definitely taken care of my body better and, you know, so I could have preserved myself and played a few more years professionally. But Good stuff. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. As always, congratulations. Thanks, Appreciate it. Saluki Hall of Famer, first year eligible too, Jamal Tatum.